Hey guys! Um, this is a very interesting day. Um, the Lord has been speaking to me all morning about mining the moment, and I said, do you want me to wait until Sunday? He said, no, I want you to do it now. <laughs> and so I'm doing it now. Um, let's pray. Father, be with us in this moment. Lord, Lord, let us be careful to just take out all distractions, everything that you're saying. Let it be clear for us. And Lord, let me as the or oracle of you speak it precisely so that I say precisely what you want me to say. In the name of Jesus, amen. Speak to me and speak through me, O oh Lord. Um, today I was sit, I was in my bathroom, um, and the Lord started speaking to me about mining the moment. And what does that what that means is sometimes in worship or in preaching there are specific moments that the Lord wants. It could be a moment of healing, a moment of refreshing, a moment of repentance. It could be all kinds of moments that the Lord wants. And sometimes with our agenda, the moment that he wants doesn't happen because we, because um, we feel like we have to move on. And the Lord's saying, um, mind the moments, like be aware of what moment it is. Um, for like for worship leaders. Uh, I can feel him saying, sometimes the Lord wants to do things in a specific moment, and he needs um, the right, he doesn't need a song to be praised, he's God. But what worship songs do is it drives the moment, it doesn't define the moment, it drives the moment, which means it causes people to to uh, move in the move in the direction that he wants to go. So um, let's say if you're a worship leader and you're in worship and you're doing your set doing your worship list or whatever, um, and there's, have you ever been in the service when there's that quiet moment, that silent moment of, and you can just feel and worship is going and the worship leader is saying, lift your hands, God, you're great, or whatever they're saying, and you could just, and there's that moment of space and the song starts up and you feel that there's more to come. But our agenda with our worship list or whatever gets in the way of that. And I'm not saying to have a worship list is a bad thing. I'm not saying to have a schedule is a bad thing. But often I believe that our schedule and what we not I believe. The Lord is saying, I think, um, I can hear him saying clearly, our schedule and our human agenda is getting in the way of him. I've, I've said this many times, he will never infringe his, his will on ours. We have to let him come in. And I think when we still what we so desperately want is at the same time what we're afraid to want. We want God to come in and invade our worship services and our spaces and our sermons. 
And I think we do some give him room to do that, but he wants room to take over. So um, there'll be times in your life of worship leaders leading, speaking um, to worship leaders now, that it'll be time to, to move to the sermon. And he will say, um, he will say, keep going, keep going, you'll feel something turning, you'll feel something pushing, and you'll be like, Lord, but it's this time, it's time for the preacher to come on, I need to go off. But he's saying, keep going, keep going, keep going, because in that moment, he is ready to bust out in someone's life. It could be yours, it could be the church, it could be some revelation he wants to give, or something he wants to do in somebody's life, or some word he wants to send forth in the atmosphere. He's saying, mind the moment. He said, be aware of what the moment is. Is that a moment for healing? Is that a moment for repentance? Is that a moment for, you know, forgiveness? And, and be, oh, he said, be aware of what moment that is and be aware that the moment will most likely not line up with what you've planned and it's okay, and he's saying, if it's, if it's what, something I'm doing, I'll back you on it. He's saying, even if you don't have a pastor that, that is, um, okay with changes or likes structure, if God is, yes, if God is doing something in someone's life in the moment and you're worshiping and you could feel him just saying, keep going, keep going. He's saying, I will back you. I will back you. I will go in back for you. And he's, he's just really saying, because in this change of season, um, not only the fall season, um, but in this change of spiritual season, he's, he wants to bring about things that he's never brought about before, but we have to be open to just a total flip in what we, what we think we're going to do, what we, what we plan to do, what we've, you know, ordered to do, I think, because I've been in, I've been, I've been in church for a while, my father was a pastor, and, um, I've been to three churches beside his, and what i found is sometimes in the service, the Lord is beginning to do something in somebody's life, or, wanting to say something, or beginning, something is tar starting to turn over, and we stop, and we either play the other, play the song we had planned, or uh, go on to the sermon while he's still trying to do something in the service, and I'm not saying that, or the experience, or whatever we call it, um, I, I'm not saying that schedules are a bad thing, schedules are a really good thing, they keep us on, on track or whatever, but, but, um, is your schedule blocking God from what he wants to do in your life or in your church? Is your schedule blocking God from what he wants to do in your life or in your church? Um, and that's the question he's asking today. 
and um, because I think as human beings we love schedule schedules we we love to know, we love to know um, that things start at this time and end at this time we love to know well it's ten o'clock so we file in at ten o'clock we have worship till eleven thirty. And then at 11.30, the preacher comes on till about 12.30 or like 12.15. And then at 12.15, we collect offering and then we go home. We, we love that. But that structure is some, sometimes inhibiting God from really doing what he wants to do. And we're like, look. We're like, Lord, do what you want to do. And we say, Lord, have your way. But at the same time, we're actually afraid to let him have his way. Like, it's almost like if we let him actually take over, we're afraid that it'll be chaos and we need to be strict and struck. Not strict and structured, but even... Uh, we need to be, like, we need, we need this structure because if we don't have this structure, what the heck's going on or whatever. And I, I feel him not, him not only saying that to worship leaders about, oh, before I move on, he want, he wants me to give this example to Um, There are certain, mm, part of mining the moment as a worship leader is knowing what song is the vehicle to to drive God's people where he wants them to go. So, if it is a... If it is a prayerful moment, like if, if, um, if it is a prayerful moment, um, a worship song in that, a worshipful song in that moment is totally inappropriate. So, be aware of, if you're a worship leader, ask God, what is what is the moment that that uh, needs to happen? Uh, what what needs what needs to go on in this moment? And what what do you need to say? Or what what wor- worship song needs to drive your people to um, to this moment? Because worship is not a musical activity. Worship is the car to get people, one of the cars, to get people to where God wants them to go. It's a vehicle. And so sometimes in the car you need, depending on where you're going, sometimes if you're traveling with your kids, you need a minivan, and sometimes you need a a Nissan or a Porsche, depending on where you're going. So, depending on what the Lord has planned to do in the service, he will, he will, um, he will require a different song, and that song uh, may or may not be on your set list. He may surprise you and say, no, not in this moment. I know you plan to do that song, but uh, I need you to make a hard left. Uh, And he said, I need you to start doing this. And he's like, more and more worshipful music is going to come 
from worship from uh, Sunday worship or when you gather um, and he, he said to mind the moment he's yeah and for pastors there is he said to me oh he said this he said let go he was saying this to me and he told me to say it to you as well he said let go of your need to preach and i said what do you mean he's like let go of your need to do a traditional sermon he's he's like some sundays i may have you do a traditional sermon some sundays maybe not some day, some Sundays you'll just uh, come on and chat to the people, and some Sundays you will, you will maybe have a panel discussion or do something different that allows um, the word to come forth. There are there are going to be um, different vehicles. That he's going to reveal to different pastors to get his word out. See, a sermon is just a vehicle to get his word out. And, like, it, it's a necessary thing. <coughs> it is to get his gospel out and his good news. But he's saying... For some churches, the vehicle will change. He's like, some preachers, it won't be standing at the pulpit and, like, preaching until you sweat it out of your clothes. Sometimes it will be just having a discussion uh, or sharing the word in a unique way or doing the word unique uniquely he said don't be afraid of this moment don't be afraid to be different in your preaching don't be afraid don't worry about the structure that you that you think you know just let go of that and let me teach you how I want my word to be delivered and he might change it from week to week. <laughs> he might say, one week, I want you to, you know, just have questions and answers the whole time. One week, I want you to have a panel discussion. One week, I want you to just chat, <laughs> you know. One, because he said, he would say, in that conversation, it will start as you, but it will, it will metamorphize, it'll change into something that I'm saying or I'm doing, and healing will take place. And I, I love a good sermon as much as the, uh, the next person, but I think um, in this moment in time, in this change of season, the Lord is changing the way he's structuring the church. And every, every, and this, this is so incredible because every church will be different. Every church's structure in this season will be different. It will be unique to the pastor and his and his or her personality or whatever um i can i can feel something birthing i can feel this new spiritual season uh birthing and changing like never before but we just have to be ready to birth and change with it as preachers and as leaders and i was saying uh, i've always said this i've always said there is no sermon that every anyone needs to preach 
There is no, there's nothing that any anyone needs to do. There's there's no special guest preacher that needs to come on. That uh, the Lord cannot usurp. If 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 you let go of the need to preach and the need to do a traditional sermon with a scripture verse and two points or three points, he'll just he'll just give you ideas like crazy. But you need to let go of what you think preaching is. You need to let go of um, that whole thing. We need to structure church this, this way. One week he may tell you to uh, have church outside or, you know, whatever in your area. He'll know what you need because each pastor, each church, each region needs something different. And I think the saddest, the saddest thing right now is churches are trying to do the same thing. We all have uh, five or six worship team members on the worship team a week. We all have a sermon where we stand at the pulpit. We all do, uh, we all do this. And some of us have a slightly different structure. Some of us call it a sermon. Some of us call it a talk, whatever. But the Lord wants to drastically not individualize his word, but individualize to the personality of the pastor how he wants his word delivered at that particular church. But we are also stuck in this structure that he can't move it. So we, so most pastors drive themselves nuts um, trying to find the scripture uh, for a sermon, trying to, you know, do this. And he's saying, let go of that. He's saying, he's saying, never let go of my word because my word is true. But let go of your structure of what you think a sermon is and isn't. He's saying, let it go. Let me show you something new. Something that you've never seen before. A structure that you've never seen before. A way of preaching and a way of teaching that you've never seen before. And he's saying, from week to week, it may change, you know? Uh, you know, sometimes he may want you to do kind of like a story kind of thing uh, with the word incorporated. Sometimes he'll want you to do a music thing, uh, incorporating music and art and painting and all of that. So, so he's saying, mind the moment, because not every moment will be the same. And we all like to say, this moment is this, and this moment is that. But, but not every church is the same. In fact, every church is called to be different. And we're, we're called to have the same base, but we're not all base being the gospel. But we're not all called to do it the same way. And the, the reason why we think we're called to do it the same way is because that's the way we've always done it. And the unfortunate thing is now we, ha we had all this time um, in the pandemic, but now we're all coming back to church and it's, and it's looking like the same it was before we left. Like, it's just some, some of us in Toronto have already left. But the Lord wants, some of us in Toronto have already come back, um, have all, uh, are still at a church. But he wants to do something totally different. 
th that pandemic break was not for us to mourn. We can't wait for people to come back to church. It was for us to examine the structure. Like, I really think the Lord wants to do some amazing things in some amazing churches having to do, do with the uh, passage personality, but we just need to let go of what is of what is church and what is not. And we need to try the spirit. He's saying, if you're not sure if that's God, he's saying, Try the spirit. See it is. See if it's of God. And it's so funny. Um, let me tell you a quick story. Um, uh, the Lord, the Lord, when the Lord gave me this word, and as I was getting dressed, I was so excited, and I started talking about it, and uh, to him, and I started talking about it, and I turned on my computer. And it was just, um, and my computer has certain settings. I use something called Zoom Text to make it bigger. Uh, and this morning, my Zoom Text settings were off, were a bit skewed. The Zoom Text was on, but the settings weren't quite right. So I was fixing the settings and whatever, and then, and then, like, I was changing the mouse color and all that stuff, like, I was getting very distracted, and he said to me, see, um, that's what happens, he's saying, the reason we don't mind, we don't mind the moment like we should, we're not aware of the moment, is because we are distracted and because we like routine. Uh, because we're human, we like routine. We like to know this is the time we're going to do this. And this is the time we do that. And this is the time we do that. And he's like, but, you, but in this season, church, you need to let that go. You need to let, let God be what he's going to be. And pastors, there is no sermon you need to preach. There is there is nothing that you need to do. No guest preacher you need to bring on. No baptism you need to bring on that you need to do. No special event that you need to do that should get in the way of what God is doing. So, if the Lord is doing something in the service, and if, if uh, you feel as the worship leader or as the pastor, God wants you to switch, well, then switch. If, if you as a worship leader can feel God still going, well, go! <laughs> And if you, as the pastor, feel when you start talking that God is saying something else totally different than what you had planned to, plan to preach, okay. Like, like, if it is from God, he will back you on it. He is obligated to back you from it, so on it. So if you're a worship leader whose pastor is just, we need to go by the book, we need to do this, we need to do that, and you feel God is doing something different, brother, sister, God will back you all the way to the bed, and you'll be surprised what he'll do in your life if you just honor him. Not to say that you shouldn't honor your leader, you should honor your leader. You must honor your leader but not over what God wants to do. No one should come before God. No sermon, nothing should come before God. So if you feel something pushing, something turning in worship, and if you feel while you're talking 
that the that the Lord is saying something totally different, or He wants you to turn to another scripture, or He He just wants you to speak about something. That's okay. That's okay. Because remember, it's His church. Like I said a few few uh, about a month ago now. And he is the CEO, and we are just um, pastors and leaders and prophets are just the managers. He's the boss. And, yeah, that's what he wants me to say. And I said, the be- I said to myself, and there'll be some days where he'll say to pastors, I want you to come on and say this right now. I don't want you to wait until Sunday. I need you to bring this word right now. On a Friday afternoon, on a Tuesday afternoon, on a Wednesday afternoon. Um... He's, he's going to say, I need you to bring this word right now. This word cannot wait until Sunday. And he's, he's going to start doing that more and more. Just having you come on randomly with no rhyme or reason why you're coming on right now. And the first time you do it, um, Pastor Deacon, he is, you are going to feel so strange. You're going to be like, Lord, it's Tuesday afternoon at 1230. Um, can this wait until Sunday? And he'll be like, no, and he'll be like pushing you and driving you crazy. Just let it go. Just let it go. Because the word that God has given you is for that day. It's for someone else. And, and life doesn't wait until Sunday. Lo- Let me say that again. Life does not wait until Sunday. So he may want you to come on on a Tuesday afternoon, Wednesday afternoon, Thursday at 7. It, it may seem to you random, but at that time, the person that needs it will be online. And you just have to be prepared for that and say, okay, <laughs> whatever, I'm here for it. Um, and that's all what he wants to say. And he's saying, don't be afraid of the changes that I, I'm rocking in your church and in your life personally. He's like, the stresses and the little annoyances, they're driving you to another place. He's like, don't be afraid of them. Because he's building something. And when you're building something, it's a mess. I don't know if you've ever been in a construction zone. I was at the dentist the other day. And, um... Uh, my dentist, my dentist is in a hospital. Um, and at the hospital was such a construction zone. Everywhere there is construction. Things are boarded up. They're working on things. It's a total mess. But I bet you that... After that construction is over, it will be beautiful. But, like, we want things to be beautiful in our lives, in the body. We want him to move. We want him, We want to see signs and wonders. But we don't want to be under construction. We don't want the mess. But the mess comes before the beauty. There needs to be a mess before there is beauty. And the Lord is making beauty out of your life 
but he will make a mess first. And that's what he's saying to mind the moment. Because in the moment, there's, there is a mess, but in that mess will become beauty. So guys, thank you so much for joining me today. Um, I don't know if I'll be on Sunday. I don't know what the Lord will um, have me say or do or whatever, but I'm here for it. Whatever he wants, I will do. Take care. Bye. And he just, uh, as I was about to sign up, God said to me, there is an uncommon anointing coming. There are people coming that you wouldn't expect. There is an uncommon uh, anointing co coming, uncommon favor, unprecedented uh, greatness that will rise up in people. He's saying, just be ready for it. Just be prepared and mind the moment. Mind the moment in your life, in your ministry, in your church. And don't miss the moment. But be aware of what moment it is. Be aware of how he's speaking to you. Be aware of what he's teaching you. Because everything that's going on in your life right now is for a purpose. And I know it sounds cliche, but it is. But he's like... It is very important right now for you to know the moment in your life. Um, whether it's a moment of restoration, whatever moment it is. And the mistake that we make as preachers is assuming that the moment is for everybody when it's not. When, when it's most likely not. Most likely... When a preacher is giving a prophetic word like you all are, you know, whatever, it's for specific people in the con congregation. It's most likely not for everybody, even though it sounds good. It's not for everybody. It's for a select uh, group in the congregation. And if it's for you, you'll feel it. And it'll be more than an emotion. It'll get down deep in your spirit. It'll, it'll resonate with you so bad if it is for you. But he's saying to mind the moment. And, and he, will, he will be with you in your minding. When you, when you're in the mess, waiting for the beauty, he'll, he'll be with you. Lord, I pray that you seal this word in our hearts. Teach us, take us um, to the moments that we are supposed to mind. And teach us more about ourselves and teach us more about you in these moments. While while our while our messages are becoming beauty, teach us to be patient. Teach us not to be stressed out. Teach us that it's okay to be under construction, because construction is messy. And teach us how to how to learn in the mess. And teach us um, where to find the beauty in the mess. Because we know we need both where we're going. We need beauty and we need mess where we're going. Because, you know, you use both to make our lives what you want it to be. Lord, I thank you. I praise you. In the name of Jesus, amen. Thank you, Lord. 
I pray that I mind minded this moment well. Thank you, Lord. Amen. So, guys, I will see you later. Thanks.